Good morning students. Today we are going to learn the types of photochemical reactions. Here we are going to learn a different types of chemical reactions shown in presence of a light. So the weakly bonded electrons which is present in the molecule will decide the chemical nature of the molecule. The excited molecule generated by irradiation will be deferred from the ground state with respect to energy. Means after absorbing energy, the ground state molecule will get excited and their, their nature is will entirely different. During this, the following changes will be seen in their excited state. The first change is the molecule gets easily dissociated as the nuclei are weakly bounded. So it will show photo dissociation. Second one, due to the presence of different vibrational and rotational mode in excited state, valence isomerization reactions are possible. Third one, as excited electron is weakly bounded to the nuclei, so it is easily removed by electrophilic reagent and it will show oxidation reaction. And the fourth one, in inorganic compound and complex, with variable valence system, redox reaction takes place. So now we are going to learn the reactions one by one. The first one is a photo dissociation or photo fragmentation. When a molecule absorbs radiation with energy equal to its bond dissociation energy, then it undergoes dissociation. The mechanism of photo dissociation is under understandable by using potential energy curve of diatomic molecules. When a molecule dissociates from excited state, it is called photolysis. Here, at least one atom is in excited state. The excess potential and kinetic energy helps to photo fragment the particles. The symmetry correlated rule is used to predict the energy state of product particles. These rules are the first one, the symmetry of a product must correlate with that of reactant. Second one, it is not possible to leave a lower energy state of a given symmetry uncorrected. Third one, non-crossing rule. The energy state of a same symmetry does not cross. So thus, the reactant and product both should lie on a same potential energy surface. So these are the symmetry correlation rules generally observed during photo dissociation or photolysis. Now let us see few examples where involves photolysis or photo dissociation. The first one is a photolysis of hydrogen iodide. So the photo dissociation of hydrogen iodide shows absorption band at the beginning at 360 nanometer and lambda max is observed at 218 nanometer with a quantum yield of 2.0. So as you can see in this reaction, HI absorbs the radiation and it forms H hydrogen free radical and iodide free radical. Further, hydrogen free radical reacts with HI to form H2 with iodine free radical. Earlier iodine free radical and next iodine free radical combines to form I2. Second is the formation of HCl. So even this is a photo dissociation reaction because here the reaction involves initiation by photo dissociation of chlorine. So in, in initiation process, chlorine absorbs the radiation of wavelength 478 nanometer and it forms two chlorine free radicals. This chlorine free radical react with hydrogen molecule to form HCl and hydrogen free radical. This hydrogen free radical reacts with another chlorine molecules to form HCl excited state. 
with the chlorine free radical chlorine free radical react with h2 to form hcl with hydrogen free radical so this is how the process of the reaction is propagated and finally the termination reaction involves two chlorine free radical combined with m m means some of the material called quenching material it may be a surface of the beaker or it may be some other foreign particle which suppresses or which stops the uh, these uh, chain reactions so that process is called quenching and m is some quenching material means this is a material which gives a support to terminate the reaction so normally to stabilize the uh, you know uh, to stabilize and these intermediates some material plays a very very important role that is called quenching material like a surface of the beaker so or uh, some foreign particles so these chlorine free radicals combined over m m means some material where it undergoes quenching or it neutralizes and cl2 plus m similarly cl dot plus h dot plus m gives rise to hcl plus m next reaction is photo dissociation on cf3i using laser uh, of 1.315 micro meter wavelength so during this process cf3i dissociate as cf3 dot plus i excited state or i dot excited state next reaction photo dissociation of acetone at 313 nanometer it will show a quantum yield of around 1 so as you can see in this reaction acetone after absorbing radiation it forms ch3 free radical ch3 co free radical ch3 free radical react with another ch3 free radical to form ethane ch ch3 co free radical react with another ch3 co free radical to form ch3 co twice so this is all the reactions observed during photo dissociation of acid now let us see a next type of reaction oh, sorry one more reaction photo dissociation of iodine the photo dissociation of iodine molecule with a suitable wavelength generates one iodine atom in a ground state and one iodine atom in excited state the excited iodine atom has enough energy to abstract hydrogen atom from any hydrocarbon in a gaseous phase as it is shown in the second reaction and there is a formation of h <coughs> so now let us see the next type of reactions that is electron transfer reaction in electron transfer reaction which already we have seen in prick dosimetry and ceric sulfate dosimetry where the oxidation uh, where electron is transferred Uh, reaction is noticed so the reaction involves electron transfers inorganic molecules generally shows uh, these type of reaction in presence of light in frick dosimetry in presence of light and oxygen oxidation of acidic ferrous sulfate takes place and it forms ceric ferric sulfate and in ceric sulfate dosimetry ceric ion C plus four ceric ion reduces to ceres ion C plus three. Next isomerization. Isomerization. Warburg in 1912 carried out transformation of malic to fumaric acid by exposing uh, aqueous solutions to the light of wavelength 205.4 nanometer. the content yield of this conversion from malic to fumaric is observed to be 0.03 also it is observed that the fumaric acid on subjected to a radiations of a wavelength 283 nanometer it forms a malic acid with content yield 0.11 so this is how by in due to presence of radiation we can convert a molecule from one isomer to another isomer similarly isomerization of thiolene 
Tribin means 1, 2 diphenyl ethene, which is on irradiation of a trans steel beam in hexane using UV light results a formation of cis isomers and uh, their abs uh, maximum wavelength absorption and epsilon value will help us to predict their presence. Also as we know the radiations will support valence isomerization. Valence isomerization is just like uh, some photochemical reactions. So the generally the conjugated pollen as it is shown in first four examples, the conjugated pollen in their excited bi radical state leads to intramolecular cyclization in a number of ways and giving rise to a number of products as you can see in this first four examples or four reactions. Similarly, cyclization of butadiene as you can see in the last few equations, the cyclization of butadiene which results a formation of bicyclobutane or cyclobutane. So these are the different types of isomerization, especially valence isomerization will be shown due to presence of radiation. Now photosensitization. So photosensitization reactions which already we have seen in uranium sulfate uh, dosimetry. In uranium sulfate dosimetry we have already seen uh, the uranium ion UO2 plus 2 will act as a photosensitizer that means it absorbs the radiation and it, and it gets excited state and this energy it transfers to a reactant molecule. So the same way now we are going to learn the example of a mercury which acts as a photosensitization uh, uh, photosensitizer to carry out the reactions. So in a vapor phase the mercury atom is frequently used as a photosensitizer and it involves using mercury at 253.7 nanometer radiation. At that case this mercury became mercury excited state and in a bracket whatever is written it is their uh, state representation uh, symbolically. So mercury is gets excited state. These excited mercury either undergoes ra resonance radiation, either it undergoes energy transfers to another molecule, either it collides with some quenching material M and uh, undergoes collisional deactivation or it undergoes collisional deactivation and making others excited or it undergoes radical formation. The triplet mercury, the triplet mercury denoted by 6,3p naught, 6,3p naught indicates triplet mercury which cannot return to a ground state mercury. Ground state mercury is 6, 1 and 0 that is a singlet state due to the doubly forbidden selection rule that is J0 to J0 transition doesn't allow. So therefore this transition that is a movement from uh, uh, triplet mercury to singlet mercury does not favor. Therefore triplet mercury that is 6, 3p naught has a long radiative lifetime and hence it is commonly used as photosensitizer. Photosensitizer. Follow. So these are the reactions where the mercury is acted as a in a photosensitizing reaction. The first one, mercury reacts with the alkene and there is a formation of different uh, unsaturated products and also a cyclic dim uh, dimer formation that is cyclobutane. Similarly, the mercury reacts with some uh, bicyc bicyclic reaction and it forms a another cyclic products. Thank you.